All right. So uh, I think now the recording has started. So um, first of all, hello, everyone. So I'm Jose Morgado, and today I'll be presenting you the CARM tool, which aims to bring the cache aware roofline model to HPC systems. So as you may know, modern high performance computing systems are becoming increasingly complex and heterogeneous, which results in them becoming harder to understand due to so many differences uh, in implementations and architectures which makes it even harder uh, than to attempt to optimize applications for those systems. So with this, we need an accurate, but also easy to understand model that can facilitate the application optimization for various systems. And this is the main appeal of the CAR model. It provides an easy to understand and accurate performance overview, along with some good optimization hints for profiled applications. However, uh, one issue with the CAR model is that it's only supported by Intel Advisor which limits its potential users. And so this problem is the main objective of the CARM tool, to port the CARM model to other CPU vendors in an open source format, specifically AMD, ARM, and RISC-V CPUs, alongside the support for application analysis in the scope of the CARM model. And finally, the combination of all of these functions uh, in a single tool, which is the CARM tool. So this is actually quite a complicated process because in order to build a car model for a CPU, you will need some tailored micro benchmarks that can take full use of the CPU's memory system and floating point units. So this requires having a good understanding of the different underlying architectures and the ways to maximize their utilization. So at the end of this talk, I'll also show you some experimental results obtained with the CARM tool, such as a CARM-based architecture and application analysis. So uh, these are the overall contents of this presentation. We'll start with a bit of state of the art, then present the CARM tool, move on to some experimental results, and finally the conclusion. So this state of the art overview will give us some context around modern CPU architectures, the cache aware roofline model itself, other tools that also implement the roofline model, and application analysis tools based on performance counters and dynamic binary instrumentation. So starting with a quick look at the general modern CPU architecture that vendors such as Intel and the ARM and RISC-V implement. So these architectures usually contain multiple cores which work together to execute various instructions. And when it comes to the instructions themselves, we have also a big variety uh, of different units inside each core which are responsible for the different instruction types. So things from uh, integer and floating point alus to memory units, and usually the CPUs also have a memory hierarchy based in multiple levels with different sizes and bandwidths that can sometimes be shared between cores or not. However, these memory hierarchies can vary greatly, especially in vendors like ARM and RISC-V, which are known for producing very specialized and heterogeneous architectures. And we need to take into account all of this uh, for the construction of the current model. So besides the memory, the computational capacity, of course, can also vary greatly between vendors. And this is in part due to details like vector extension, extensions that an architecture implements. So in this case, each vendor uh, utilizes their own vector extensions, uh, where Intel and AMD both use SSC, AVX, and AVX512, while ARM uses Neon and more recent PSV, and RISC-V implements RBV. So these extensions must also be fully utilized in order to manage to extract the peak performance of a CPU which is crucial for the CARM model. And for this reason, each vector extension will need its own tailored benchmarks in order to properly evaluate the performance of a CPU in the context of the CARM model. But now talking about the CARM itself, so how does it actually work? So uh, as you can see, the CARM has two main roofs, uh, the slope roofs here in red, which are based on the maximum bandwidth of the different memory levels of an architecture, and then the flat roof in blue, which is based in the peak floating point performance of the architecture. So these roofs then designate two main areas of the car model below them, which is the memory bound area here in red and the compute bound area in blue. So if our profile application ends up in the memory bound area, like the first point here in the graph, uh, the car indicates that we should first try memory related optimizations in order to see the best performance gains. While if we fall in the compute bound area, we should first try to improve the utilization of the arithmetic units of the CPU, for example, via vectorization when possible. And finally, if we are in the mixed area, then both strategies should be considered. However, uh, like I said, to build the CARM properly, we must utilize micro benchmarks in order to get the realistic sense 
of the maximum performance of the CPU, instead of relying on possibly unachievable theoretical values that the vendors report. So this is done via memory micro benchmarks that determine the maximum bandwidth of each memory level and floating point micro benchmarks to determine the peak computational performance of the CPU. And so the main objective of the CARM tool is to automate this process. So via the automatic generation, execution, and measurement of these assembly micro benchmarks that can fully utilize the target system to build the CARM model on any platform. So like I said before, the CARM is only officially supported by Intel Advisor. However, there are other tools that also implement the concept of roofline model, for example, AMD UProf and ERT, the Empirical Roofline Toolkit, uh, starting with Intel Advisor, which also includes the possibility for application analysis via dynamic binary instrumentation, and then AMD UProf, which does something similar, but with performance counters. However, here AMD UPro UProf only implements the original roofline model, and it's only based on theoretical values. And then besides these two closed source tools, there is ERT, which supports CPUs from both vendors. Uh, and while it does not explicitly state which type of roofline model it implements, it produces something very similar to the CAR model. Uh, however, the ERT tool does not provide any way to analyze applications in the context of the CAR model. So also, as you may have noticed, none of these vendors are able to provide support for Sorry, none of these tools are able to provide support for other vendors like ARM and RISC-V, which is exactly the problem that the CARM tool fixes via the support for these vendors. And by also providing both DBI and performance counter application analysis options for an even more uh, flexibility in its utilization. So in order to provide this uh, application analysis support, starting with performance counters, uh, we looked at various performance tools to integrate with to achieve this functionality. And four main tools were looked at, in this case, Puppy, Perf, Liquid, and Performance Copilot, or PCP, which are all open source. However, for the sake of time, I'm only going to discuss Puppy and Perf, since Puppy is currently the performance counter tool, which is integrated with the current tool, and we plan to add the Perf support soon too. So Papi has the advantage of being able to abstract the details of the performance counters of each vendor and provide a consistent interface, which facilitates the analysis of application uh, across different architectures, having only the main disadvantage of only allowing for region of interest profiling in an application, when sometimes it's also useful to profile the entire execution. And then we have the perf tool, which uh, you probably know, it's part of the Linux kernel, and this tool, uh, is the one with the support for the most architectures because it basically supports any architecture supported by Linux. However, its interfacing is not as easy to port across different architectures like Puppy, which is why its integration is still a work in progress. And so besides performance counters, other strategies can also be used for application analysis, such as dynamic binary instrumentation, which is what Intel Advisor does, for example. Uh, which has the advantage of not needing any root privileges to be utilized, which can sometimes be a requirement in certain systems when it comes to the performance counter access. And so for this reason, we implemented both Intel SD and Dynamo Rio as options for DVI analysis in the current tool, uh, starting with Intel SD, which allows us to analyze a list of all the executed instructions by an application, which are then used to calculate the performance metrics that the CARM needs, such as arithmetic intensity and gigaflops, which are necessary to plot your application in the CARM. Uh, however, Intel SD is closed close source, which does not allow for much customization besides what's already offered. But since the tool already provides enough information for analysis, it is currently supported. And then another limitation of Intel SD is that it's limited to Intel and AMD, uh, while an other open source tools such as Dynamo Rio can also support ARM and more recently RISC-V, although still in initial stages. Uh, this tool only takes slightly longer to perform application analysis. However, it allows for the extension of the support for this analysis to ARM and RISC-V systems. And since this tool is open source, it was integrated with the current tool via a custom Dynamo Rio client. And so now uh, with the state of the art finished, uh, I'll be moving to the next section where I will present the current tool itself. And I will also switch from the slides sometimes to show different features of the tool live. So in this section, I'll give an overview of the current tool uh, with a high level view of its functionalities, like the graphical user interface, the automatic benchmarking and the application analysis. 
and then with more detail on some more important parts like the benchmark generation, frequency measuring, and the benchmarking itself. So starting with the high-level view, the CARM tool can basically be described through its various uh, independent modules that implement each of its main functions. So to use the tool, you can use both the command line or the graphical interface from which you can start the necessary benchmarks to obtain the CARM for your system. And besides that, you can also perform the application analysis via performance counters or via dynamic binary instrumentation. So the CARM tool currently supports most vector extensions of the main CPU vendors, with the exception of ARM SPE, which is a work in progress. And with this, I mean that the CARM tool is capable of generating assembly micro benchmarks that can make use of these vector extensions when they are available uh, in the underlying system. So these high-level modules are implemented by the various files present in the source code of the CARM tool. And I'll now give you a brief overview of what, of what each of these modules does, starting with the graphical interface. So this interface runs on your browser using the Dash framework, which as you can see, can be used for result visualization of both CARM and application analysis results. And besides that, you can also launch the CARM benchmarks directly from the GUI using the sidebar. And finally, you can also uh, start application analysis in the interface itself. And so for a quick demo, I will uh, start up the interface here in another tab and show you. So basically, to start up the interface, uh, you just need to run this Python script here, uh, which is in the main folder of the tool, which will give you a link to which you can open in your browser that I have over here. So this is the interface. And uh, from here, you have the sidebar, uh, like I showed you before, from, from where you can run your CARM benchmark. So here you can input the different configurations you want. You can select the different thread counts you want to run this for, different size extensions, precision, load star ratios, things like that. And you can also just uh, run it by the default, so just by clicking here. And then what you get in the terminal is some uh, intermediary output of the tool. So for example, the cache sizes that were detected for your system, the vendor, the, the supported ISA extensions, and then also what tests will be uh, running. So by default, we run uh, tests for all of your available ISA extensions on one thread. And uh, as you can see, I sped up these benchmarks to, to make it easier for the live demo. So I already finished the L1 and you get some intermediary output that gives you things like the recorded frequency of your CPU, the bandwidth measure, the bytes per cycle, instructions per cycle, among other data. And then you can also uh, stop this at any time by just clicking here. And this will now stop the execution of the benchmarks. And then for application analysis, if you click here, you'll get this form in which you can uh, provide the path to your executable and the arguments that it takes, uh, and then select what type of analysis you want. So in this case, if you select DBI of the whole application, you don't have to do anything to your code, just submit the executable. And in case of the region of interest, you do have to define your region of interest in the source code before compilation. And I'll actually leave this uh, running an analysis here. So what you do is you select you choose a name for uh, for the machine that will be running this, because then we match it with the name you give it in the current benchmarks. And uh, now I'm just going to fetch the path to this application, which is a simple SPMV uh, application, which takes as input uh, a matrix that you can see here, and then just a number of iterations. And if I now click uh, here, it has now started up. So running provided application for timing data. First, we run it for timing data, uh, and then we run it for the opcode analysis using the, the DBI tools. And now I'll leave this running, uh, while I also show you the way you can visualize results. So here you will have all of the available machines uh, in your results folder, so I have uh, many here. Uh, but I'll open my laptop results. And then from here, you again uh, can select whatever results you have stored from running the benchmarks previously. So I have a lot of variety here in terms of what I can select, but I'll show you just the usual AVX2, which is my best ISA and scalar. So you can compare the results of two different benchmarks. And then you can also plot the results of either mixed benchmarks from the CARM tool or other, other applications that you analyze. So 
you can see them here as these uh, little dots. And so this is basically uh, most of the functions of the GUI. So now I'll go back to the slides. And now uh, I'll talk more about the automatic benchmarking part. So first, to facilitate the utilization, uh, the CARM tool automatically detects the more important aspects of your system, like you just saw now with the cache sizes, available sizes. But even the maximum supported RVG vector length in a RISC-V system, for example. And this is all done by the files in the configuration folder. However, you can also manually provide these details. And uh, these details are then used to generate the different necessary benchmarks to build the CAR model. And as you can see in this GIF, some examples of those various micro benchmarks or different ISA extensions. Uh, they are automatically generated and executed thanks to these two modules here, which I will talk more about later. Now, finally, I'll also give you an overview of how the application analysis is implemented, uh, which was done via the integration with other tools such as Papi, DynamoRio, and Intel SD. So starting with Papi, uh, which allows us to access the performance counters of the system, we take advantage of the high-level API from Papi here, which allows us to define a region of code to be analyzed, from which then we extract the necessary performance events to plot an application in the CARM. So, and then for the dynamic binary instrumentation, we use Intel SD and Dynamo Rio, uh, and we also developed a way to automatically interface with them and define regions of interest from which we obtain a breakdown of the executed opcodes, which is then used to calculate the CARM metrics like the gigaflops and the AI to plot your application in the CARM. And this last integration is facilitated by the DBI CARM Roy header file, which contains a simple API we developed to interface with both Dynamo Rio and Intel SD to define the region of interests. And actually, I will uh, quickly show you how you would do this yourself. So, for example, here is the source code of that SPMV application I left running for the analysis. And as you can see, all you need to do is uh, keep the, um, the header file in the same folder and then just include it. And then you can go ahead and use the CARMROI begin and CARMROI end functions to define your region of interest. And uh, you can also do the same thing with Papi. In this case, you include Papi, the Papi header, and then you use the Papi high level region begin and Papi high level region end uh, functions. And so now also the analysis should be complete, the one I left running. So this is an example of the output you get. So you get uh, different metrics like the total floating point operations memory bytes, integer operations, and then the execution time, gigaflops, bandwidth, arithmetic intensity. But you also get a breakdown of the different opcodes that were detected during execution, organized by memory, and then floating point of the different ISAs. And uh, as you can see, uh, now if I refresh this, I should have now that new application should show up here in my list. So I will just bring up the same results as before because this is running on uh, one thread in this case so it's right over here as you can see from the the date uh, and it was with dynamo rio region of interest so now it should show up uh, somewhere around here so as you can see uh, this application according to the CARM is very memory bound uh, which is expected from an spmd application and actually i will give you a small uh, demonstration how you could improve this performance. In this case, uh, what I'll do is actually run the same application, but use uh, the same matrix, however, reordered uh, with the RCM reordering, which this type of reordering uh, makes better use of the caches, which should directly target our uh, memory bottleneck that is being detected here. So as you can see, I'm going to switch my input matrix here just to its RCM version. And then I just need the path to my executable again. So I'll grab it here. And once again, I'll just put the same name for my machine so it shows up. And I'll just uh, have it run. And now, as you can see, it's already started. So this time we'll wait just a little bit for it to finish, which should be quite quick. So this was the first run for the timing data and the application since I we also have a timer there just to show the theoretical gigaflops. It's reporting 0 0.23. So let's see if we get something similar here. So now it's finished the, 
of code parts. And now we have, so the tool also reports 0 0.23 gigaflops here. Uh, and now if I refresh this, uh, you will see that we, we got some better gigaflops in general compared to the previous one. Uh, if I just, my computer is a bit slow, I guess, with the screen sharing. But uh, so here it is, the new one. So this is a bit more recent, 14.23. And as you can see, we have moved up here. So we have more gigaflops. The arithmetic intensity stays the same because we didn't actually change the underlying algorithm. We just used the reordering that made it so the caches could make better use of the data in the matrix. And since this was our main bottleneck, we managed to get some more gigaflops. In this case, it was about 60% uh, gain. So this is an example of how you would do your application analysis for your own applications and then compare to see how you are doing and how far away you are from your peak performance. Now, going back to the slides. Uh, if Yeah. So now I'll talk uh, in more detail about what was done to allow for the support of these different types of extensions in the CARM tool, which starts with the automatic generation of micro benchmarks that follow a similar general structure for all vendors, which is then adapted to the limitations of each ISA, uh, followed by a frequency measuring step, and then some preliminary timing tests to ensure stable results, and finally the benchmark execution itself. So all of these steps are implemented by the various files you see here starting with the benchmark generation in the blue module. So the benchmark generation module is implemented by the, these various C files, which have as a final product the different benchmarks you see here on the right. So these files store the different assembly instructions and registers used by each ISA and automatically perform the necessary calculations to generate the assembly code that respects the specifications of the user. And most benchmarks will have an inner and outer loop, as you can see in this GIF, in which the inner loop contains a fixed number of iterations while to ensure the, that we perform the specified number of instructions, while the outer loop can be adjusted externally to allow us to vary the execution time of these benchmarks. And now I'll also quickly show you this in action by starting up benchmarks with different specifications so we can see how the code changes in real time. So this is actually done here. So this is the file where we store the the benchmark that will be ran by the tool. And now if I, for example, bring up my terminal here uh, and also take the chance to show you how to run benchmarks from the terminal. So basically what you do is you call the run.py script and this V flag is just uh, verbose. So you get a lot of the maximum output, intermediate output that we can give you. Then you can select your type of instruction. You can select your ISA, in this case, scalar, your type of test and the name for it. So if I start it up now, this uh, file here will change. So now the assembly changed to use the scalar instructions. In this case, this is a memory ben micro benchmark, so it's only going to do memory instructions. And then, for example, if I switch now to a, an AVX2 with FMA uh, floating point test, for example, uh, it will also change now to use those uh, FMA instructions in the AVX2 ISA. And finally, you can even mix them together. Uh, with the mixed type of test. So now it's going to be a mixed of SSC uh, FMA with memory. So as you can see, now we have here interleaving some uh, FMA instructions with the memory instructions. So using the tool does not require any knowledge of assembly. You just need to specify what tests you want to do for what ISA, and you have a lot of configuration power here. But then if you have uh, some different ISA that we don't currently support, you can even uh, add support to that ISA by uh, providing here in this file, which is where we define all of the different ISAs that we support, uh, some details like the, the name of your registers, the instructions you need to be using, the number of registers, among other things. And while this is not yet fully automated, uh, with some extra steps, you would be able to then add uh, your own ISA here. And we plan to make this uh, fully automated, so you just have to come over here and uh, type your specifications and have it run. So uh, now moving on to how the CARM tool actually measures the frequency of the CPU before performing the benchmarks. Uh, this measurement is based on an assembly function too, uh, which has a series of dependent additions, which then leads to only one instruction being performed per cycle by the CPU. 
And then uh, by knowing these number of instructions performed and time taken, we can obtain the frequency of the CPU. And we have used this method uh, in all of our tested machines so far, and the deviations have always been under 1% from expected values. Uh, and to measure the time taken by the execution of this function, we use the timestamp counter in Intel and AMD CPUs. And for ARM and RISC-V, we use the clock at time function. So to finish, after generating the benchmarks and measuring the CPU frequency, we are now ready to start executing them. So all of this happens in the main test.c file, which coordinates the creation of threads, memory allocation, frequency measuring, and benchmarking. So as I mentioned before, the CARM tool first runs the benchmarks to determine how long they will take, and then it adjusts their execution time via the outer loop to ensure that they last enough time to produce stable results, but also don't take unnecessarily long times. And finally, once this is done, the tool then executes the benchmarks 1,024 times, and then the best run is selected from which the bandwidth or the peak of false values are calculated. So now uh, I'll talk about some of the experimental results that were obtained when using the CARM tool. So this includes a CARM-based architecture analysis of different vendors, a comparison with Intel Advisor and DRT, and the analysis of an SPMV application using the CARM tool. So starting with the machines that were used to obtain these results, we have one from each of the main vendors. So we have the Venus machine with a Skylake X CPU that implements SSE AVX2 in the VX512 extensions, and the car machine with an AMD Zen 3 CPU for uh, which implements SSE in the VX2. We have ARMQ with the Vulkan architecture that has the Neon extension, and then the Milk 5 machine with the Risk 5, which is a Risk 5 system that implements RVV 0.7.1. And besides that. All of these CPUs uh, have two floating point units per core and between two, three and one load store units per core, which are then used to define the theoretical limits of each architecture, which we'll now uh, see. So starting with the analysis of the memory system of each CPU, uh, for that I will use these bandwidth graphs that show how the measured bandwidth and instructions per cycle change as we increase the amount of memory used so this graph is also generated by the current tool. Uh, if you do the test type mem, uh, and it uses the same benchmark used for the current generation. So in the Venus machine, we can see that we stayed slightly above two instructions per cycle, which is considerably lower than the expected three instructions per cycle uh, that the three load star units should be able to support. However, the, this uh, limitation is also reported by Intel themselves which in their hardware optimization manual also specify that the Skylake X architecture is only capable of sustaining around two memory instructions per cycle, which matches our results. So then in the current machine, uh, we can reach those three instructions per cycle uh, with the load star ratio that best matches the two load and one star units of the Zen 3 architecture. And then we can even confirm the presence of these exact number of units, since in the load-only test, we only reach two instructions per cycle, while in the store-only tests, we only reach one instruction per cycle. Then in the ARMQ machine, we also get to the expected two instructions per cycle, and we can also see that only one of the units is capable of performing stores, uh, because we only reach one instruction per cycle in the store-only tests here. And then finally, in MILK5, we reach the expected one instruction per cycle since we only have one unit here. Uh, however, uh, in the store tests, we can observe some unusual behavior uh, here, the yellow line, uh, where we obtain 0 0.5 instructions per cycle until 16,000 kilobytes. And this is likely due to the adaptive write allocate policy of the CPU, which actually deactivates the write allocate when multiple stores are detected which bypasses the cache levels. And this is why we don't see the decreasing performance as we move across the, the memory system. So to sum it all up in this table, we can see that it was easier to achieve the expected values in the memory levels closer to the CPU. Uh, and then in the case of the ARMQ and MILK files, uh, there were no realistic theoretical data with which to compare. Since that, for example, the cited theoretical L2 maximum bandwidth for the ARMQ CPU should allow for four instructions per cycle, which is already twice as much as the load star units in this architecture. So now moving on to the analysis of the arithmetic capabilities of each machine, 
So for this, we use the CARM itself from each system, which defines in its flat roof the peak gigaflops obtained during benchmarking, uh, where I also added the corresponding instructions per cycle measured to compare with the number of uh, units that we have. So we also check uh, if the performance obtained from the mixed benchmarks that perform both floating point and memory instructions at the same time uh, to see if they can stay close to the performance roofs of the CARM, which are these various dots that you see here in the plot. So starting with the Venus machine, which nearly obtained the two instructions per cycle uh, for both AVX512 and Scalar, uh, while the mixed benchmarks uh, stayed relatively near the CARM roofs with only 3% deviation or five in some, uh, except for the FMA AVX512 ones with the 25% deviation. And then in the CARM machine, we also managed to reach the two instructions per cycle expected with AVX2 and Scalar, while the mixed benchmarks also remained relatively close, especially for the add instruction with only around 1% deviation in both AVX2 and Scalar. And then on ARMQ, we again reached those two instructions per cycle, but the mixed benchmarks do not perform as well. So with the Scalar ones having a 17% deviation and then a 25% devia 25 deviation when the neon uh, vector extension is used. And then finally on MILK5, we also obtain two instructions per cycle on the floating point tests, but then uh, we do get a smaller deviation from the mixed benchmarks uh, with the most deviation coming from uh, RVV at 10%. So basically the floating point limits were generally easier to achieve in all architectures, as you can see from this table, that sums up the deviations from what we expected. However, uh, the mixed benchmarks show that by stressing the memory and computation at the same time, some pipeline conflicts can lead to some slowdowns, particularly with more complex floating point operations such as the fused multiply add, or when ISAs with bigger operands are used. So now moving to the CARM comparison, we compared the results of the CARM tool with other roofline tools in the Venus machine, and in this case it was the RTM Intel Advisor, to determine if the values we obtain can also be uh, reached by other tools. So in this case, uh, we have the AVX512 VRT tool results here in red, uh, from which we obtain similar values for the floating point roofs, but then a lower bandwidth measurement for the L1, as you can see. But then for the other memory, memory levels, the RT can manage to obtain some better values. However, this can be explained by the way the RT actually determines uh, the different cache sizes in a system, which is based on the bandwidth measurement variations between different bandwidth tests and not the actual uh, physical cache levels themselves. Oops, here I moved back. Uh, so this method can result in wrong assumptions about the cache sizes, and sometimes the tool can even report more cache levels than what are present in the system. So this makes it possible that the measurements from a slower memory level could easily be affected by the measurements of faster adjacent levels, leading to these high results. So we also compared uh, with uh, the, current, the current tool with Intel Advisor, and uh, as you can see here, we managed to obtain some very similar values for the floating point and L1 roofs uh, with 222 gigaflops uh, for the single precision FMA instructions and then 479 gigabytes per second for the L1. However, Intel Advisor managed to obtain some considerably higher values for the L2 uh, with 216 gigabytes and DRAM with 17.2 gigabytes per second respectively. But this can also be explained by the fact that Intel Advisor can adapt its load star ratio to each memory level to get the best possible results, while the CARM tool employs the same load star ratio across all the tests for consistency. So for example, if we actually uh, configure the CARM tool to run the L2 tests, uh, for example, just with loads, we can ob obtain uh, a similar value to Intel Advisor. And the same thing for DRAM, where we can go up to the 19, almost 20 gigabytes per second, which does manage to surpass the values obtained by Intel Advisor. So finally, to demonstrate the application analysis functionality of the current tool, we also analyzed an SPMV implementation using the Eigen library, which I also just showed it here on my laptop, in the Venus and ARMQ machines to compare the difference in the implementation of SPMV by this library in different architectures. So besides that, we also tested the impact of using an RCM reordered matrix in the performance of the SPMV execution. 
And as you can see right away, the Venus machine obtained more gigaflops than ARMQ, which is expected due to its superior CPU that you can also see from the higher CARM roofs here in black that correspond to the Venus machine versus the lower ones in red from the ARMQ machine. And besides this, we can also see a discrepancy in the arithmetic intensity of both machines, which indicates that the Huygen library might implement SVMV differently in ARM and Intel architectures. So now looking more into the performance difference between the original matrix uh, in blue and the RCM matrix in green, we can see, like we just saw here in my laptop too, that the RCM reordering almost doubled the gigaflop performance of the SVMV execution. And uh, besides that, in the ARMQ machine, we only perform DBI analysis since we did not have the necessary permissions to access performance counters in the system. However, we did it in the Venus machine, which corresponds to the dots outlined in red, while the DBI analysis corresponds to the dots outlined in black. So here we can see that both analyses, despite being very different in their approaches, managed to obtain some quite similar results uh, when analyzing the same application with only some slight discrepancies. And uh, with this, uh, we have now reached the conclusion. But before that, I'll also just give you a quick showcase of how different ISA extensions and memory levels used can affect the peak performance on a system. And I'll show you this in the GUI here. So I already have here some results from mixed benchmarks to simulate uh, applications that would uh, encounter certain common problems. So starting with the first one, which is a DRAM benchmark using Scalar, uh, this one, as you can see, uh, is placed over here right on the uh, flat roof that corresponds to the add instruction with Scalar. So if this was, for example, your application, the only way to improve your performance from here would have to be uh, by switching from scalar instructions to uh, some kind of vector extension. And to demonstrate that, uh, I will now plot the same thing, but for AVX2. So this would correspond to vectorizing your code, basically. And now, as you can see, we get some better performance. However, we still get stuck here hitting the DRAM roof because this is a DRAM uh, bound uh, micro benchmark. So again, if this was your application, now you'd want to look into how to get over this uh, by using your cache, uh, your memory uh, a little bit better to take advantage of your caches. And to simulate that, I have here uh, an L1 uh, mixed benchmark that targets uh, also AVX2. And again, we see that now we are hitting the add roof for AVX2. And finally, this would be the final optimization step uh, if possible, you would try to implement a uh, fused multiply addition in your code to get up to two times the performance. And for that, I now uh, run the same mixed benchmark, but using FMA instructions. And as we can see, now we do reach the peak performance possible on the CPU. And you might also notice that the arithmetic intensity here doubled. And this is because I actually kept the, the same ratio of floating point instructions to memory instructions. But then because uh, the FMA instructions actually perform two floating point operations per instruction, we get twice the arithmetic intensity. And so now uh, I will uh, briefly talk about some ongoing collaborations to, uh, to integrate the CARM tool uh, in various European projects and organizations such as POP3, Cyclops, CERN and VSC alongside completed collaborations, such as with the Sparsity project, which resulted in the development of the live CARM in the Super Twin tool. And finally, I will also mention the CARM tool GitHub and its paper. So starting with the ongoing collaborations, the CARM tool is undergoing development to be integrated with other application analysis tools, such as Adaptive Perf from CERN and Paraver from BSC, to provide support for application analysis in the context of the CARM in these tools. And besides this, collaborations with POP3 and Cyclops are also undergoing to analyze applications developed in these projects, uh, such as a SQL-based database being developed in the Cyclops project with the objective of finding ways to improve the performance of these applications. And now moving to the complete collaborations, such as the Life Carm dashboard developed in the Super Twin tool that you see here in this GIF. Uh, this feature was developed by including the CARM tool uh, source code directly in the SuperTwin tool. 
which then automatically interfaces with the CARM tool to realize the necessary benchmarks to generate the CARM graph for a target system. And then we combine this with live performance counter data from SuperTween, which allows us for the analysis of applications live during their execution. And then the live CARM can be used, for example, to compare different SPMV algorithms and the impact of RCM in their performance, as you can see here on the left. But uh, it can also be used for other things like the validation of micro benchmarks from other tools, such as Liquid, in which we verified that the CARM roofs imposed by the CARM tool were reached by Liquid, but they were also uh, not surpassed. So they matched uh, our expected peak performance. And so the CARM tool, is open source and available on GitHub. And we also have an accepted paper about the tool, which will soon be published to uh, IISWC24. And the CARM tool is the first of hopefully many tools to be developed in the scope of CHAMP Hub, which is the heterogeneous computing and performance modeling hub created by Ineshkidi. And with this, uh, I conclude my presentation. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, thank you, Jose, for this really interesting talk. Um, yeah, so we are in the uh, answers and a question and answer section. So if you have uh, a question, you can either type it into the chat or as we are a small group, uh, just raise your hand and then I ask you to speak up and ask a question. Um, so far, we don't have any questions. So let me ask you uh, one or two on my own. The one thing I was wondering, so in the context of HPC, you wouldn't run like one uh, one threaded application, sequential yes. applications, you would run multiple threads. Yes, yes. And so I understand that, I mean, I can run my benchmark with different number of threads yes. and, 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 and get all the results and plot them in. But do you think about having some sort of automated scalability analysis where you could provide, say, like provide the number of threads you want to run and it automatically does like uh, scalability plotting or something, or do I have to do that one by one myself? Uh, so yeah, right now, what you can do is uh, specify different thread counts to run. And then you, at most here in the GUI, you could compare just uh, two results at a time. However, to automate the process, it could be uh, easily done because we do store all of these results in a CSV format and uh, uh, it would take, for example, a, a simple script that would just grab our column of threads and then grab the column of, for example, gigaflops. And you could get some kind of uh, scalability graphs to see if you do get the same performance that you would expect from more threads or not. Yeah. But it is not a, a full feature. So it, it needs some manual work. Okay. Um, Pramod, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, it's easy rather than typing. Uh, thank you very much for an interesting presentation. I have one or two questions. Um, for the instrumentation, uh, the code snippet that you show, there was, I think, the Papi initialization, and also yes. there was CARM initialization. Yeah, uh, so let me show you. So I left it, uh, so I did it like this to be able to show both at the same time. But uh, so the Papi is basically commented out. So okay. you do have to choose between one of them at a time. So you, if you try both at the same time, uh, it might not work very well. Sometimes it does work, but uh, yeah, so you would use one at a time. So if you remove the comment from this, then you would switch to using the puppy ones and you would turn off the the DBI ones. So that's that's it, basically. Okay, and internally it will do the... Uh, it will use the, uh, yeah, it will initialize. So the puppy basically, uh, a DBI and puppy. Okay, I see, I understood. Yeah, so the DBI uh, header file works with uh, Intel SD and Dynamo Rio, which understood. is what I showed before. And then puppy works with the, the regular puppy tool. So if you have puppy installed in your system, the only thing you need to do is during compilation link uh, the header file so that you can use the puppy functions and Understood. then you can run it uh, for analysis. Understood. Yeah, just uh, uh, I was looking uh, at this carefully because in production applications for each performance tools, when we have to you know do the instrumentation, it's a bit uh, 
painful or inconvenient. So having, I mean, typically then we use nowadays the caliper and then caliper have the plugins for all profiling tools. Uh, so having something like that will be helpful. Okay. Um, just a side comment. And just to extend, uh, uh, to, uh, based on Burns' uh, question, if if uh, if there is a pure MPI applications, the P, you know not multi-threaded, but I want to run as a pure MPI on a single node, uh, yeah. is that supported? Uh, right now, uh, not really. I would say we do have plans to to work with that because it's also something that we need for integration with other tools. Uh, but it is a, a work in progress at the moment. Okay. So this is mostly for multi-threaded. Okay. Uh, yeah. Understood. Thank you very much. I actually have a question related to what Pramod was asking. When you do the, the instrumentation with like either Puppy or uh, your yes. own one, can you mark multiple regions or can you only mark one region uh -huh. at a time? For now, only one, but I have received that question before and uh, okay. I am working on how to to f to do that properly. For Puppy, I think it will be easier because with Puppy, you can already name your regions. So it would be here, this string here inside, but I'm still working on doing that for DBI and then implementing everything so that it works. But for now, just one, yes. Yeah. And I uh, second the the suggestion from uh, Pramod to support Caliber. So many people use Caliber yeah. uh, and uh, looking at their kind of plugin model or something that would be nice if there would be also some kind of, uh, I can send you pointers if you're- uh, Totally, you I'm always yourself. interested yeah. in uh, adding more support to make it yeah. as flexible as possible, so. Yeah. Okay, now we have more questions on the chat. So uh, Piero is asking, uh, do you have yeah. already an idea when the SVE extension will be available? Um, so for now, uh, we did just get access to a machine with SVE. So this was our main problem. Uh, so now we got access to one and I am actively trying to, to have it uh, working. It's not too different from RVV in terms of the assembly, but it can be uh, still tricky. So it will depend on the the way things go. I'm still in the initial stages, but it can either be very fast or it can take a bit longer. It just depends on, you know, the very fine details of the extension itself, because we need to generate the assembly completely automatically. So we need to know very well uh, the different things that we can use, but it's a work in progress. I would like to say uh, next month we, we could have it. Okay. For so example. we're talking about like soon, not really like yeah. years or something. Okay. No, no, yeah. not years, not years. Okay. Um, and then Michael had a question, are the performance variations that were indicated on some roofline plots normally distributed? Uh, for example, as many measurements below the quoted value as above, or, or is there some way to see the distribution? Uh, so right now, uh, no, we only do just uh the regular uh, current plotting via the um, just the the measurements uh, themselves from a single uh, result. We don't have any any more things there. Okay. Um, yeah. And then we have Leonel. Do you want to ask it yourself, or should I? Yeah. Really... So, uh, are you planning to install the tools model to be used by HPC yeah. centers? And uh, yeah, we are actually working on that. So we still have to. Uh, now, the, the challenge now is with the portability of the tool, which is currently quite good, but then there are still deployment uh, details that are not yet fully polished to allow for the deployment, but we are working on it, basically. And I have tested it in some that I have access, and it's been quite easy to install, so okay. it's looking possible. Thank you. Okay, um, so it looks like that were all the questions. So thanks again, Jose, very much for this very interesting talk. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, have a rest, nice rest of the week. And once the recording will be available, I will notify everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.